up guys it's the real deal back with another ray trailer video now i know you guys all love nukas there's nothing better than watching your nuka just turn around and just drop the enemy team in one hit but the truth is the real heroes of live arena are support champions nukas they're a dime a dozen there are so many good nukas but with support champions there's really good ones but there's only a handful that will really carry your account at top level play so that's what we'll be looking at today but just before we do that i do want to ask if you are new to the channel please do like and subscribe it helps my channel grow and it motivates me to make more content for you guys so just before we do check out the list i do want to ask who's who's your favorite support champion and who do you think that i've missed off the list let's check out the list cardinal now he is a solid option for live arena the way you want to build him is really really fast and an immunity set. So the immunity set is going to give him protection in case you don't get to go first. And you want him to be part of a speed team. So he's got an A2 that you can use defensively. That removes all debuffs. And cleansers are great for live arena. But he also places block debuffs and a revive on death for two turns. And the revive on death cannot be removed. So it can't be stripped. And the thing is people do not bring in block revive champions so that means you're going to be guaranteed that revive on death which is just insane and that means you're going to get to go again and that also means that the enemy team will have probably blown their big moves and you just get to come back and go again but not only does he do that but you can use him offensively with his a3 which places a increased crit rate and increased crit damage but it's not really about that it's more about that it's an ally attack team move and your whole team's just going to come in and just slam the enemy team so good um but yeah great champion and you can just you know what i really like about him is that he's so universal that you know you can use him defensively or offensively and he he's gonna get so much done for you do saga now this one is another meat shield just like on death knight but the only difference is she is going to be absorbing damage for the whole team from critical hits by 30 percent and if the nukas are the only ones that are going to be doing damage and of course, Onikas are always going to be doing critical hits and she will be taking on that damage instead. So the way you want to build her is stack HP on her. HP glove, HP chest and HP boots. And the gear sets I would say to go for would be stone skin. Obviously, stone skin is going to be amazing on her. But um, Immortal as an off piece would be great. Guardian set is re really good as well, which means that she's going to be absorbing more hits as well. Or you can put her in a bolster set as well. So you get a big fat shield. But yeah, just insane. She will just be absorbing everything. Then she's got an A3 with ally protection and strengthen. The so ally protection is an insane buff on itself. And that's really going to be protecting your supports and your nukas on your team as well. But also, not only she's doing that, she's doing the strengthen as well. That reduces even more damage. Just her kit is just insane. Defensively, She's just on another level. Then she's got an A2 that you're kind of using on an offensive way. The basic places decrease uh, critical damage and decrease attack debuff, which are both insane. So that's going to be on nukas who have um, attack, which is higher than defense. But say you're coming up against a defensive champion or a defensive nuka, then she's going to throw out decreased defense as well, which is great because it's going to decrease their damage if they're a different uh, def decrease uh, sorry if they're a defensive nuka but yeah but that decreased attack and that decreased uh, crit damage there's not many champions that do that and that is really going to make them just hit like absolute wimps um, and then she's got a pretty nice um, a1 as well that does block active skills as well so you do want to try and get a bit of accuracy on her but i would say ideally in my opinion i'd want her to be more defensive with her passive and her a3 it's yumiko and she's a really annoying champion. And it's all because of her A3. So she decreases the cooldown of all ally skills by three turns. That's really huge. So basically, you know, you use all your big moves. She resets them and you get to use them again. But also she increases the cooldowns of all enemy skills by three turns. So this even goes through stone skin. And that means you can completely lock out your team for three turns. And, your, you know, the enemy team can just get so much done. It is really annoying. She's also got 
a really nice A1 as well. So if she's got um, more than 50% HP, she attacks twice and she gets to steal 15% turn the year of the enemy champion, meaning that she can go really fast. And the way you want to build her is just really, really fast, as fast as you can with um, a decent amount of accuracy so you can lock out the enemy team. I'd say if you can, you want to be looking for around 600 accuracy and 300 plus speed. I'm talking about sort of like top level play here. But um, yeah, so, so annoying to come up against. She's almost an always instant ban. Not always, but in general, she is. Okay, so this guy was a fusion. There was mixed feelings about him. Some people thought he was going to be really weak. Some people thought he was going to be really strong. Personally, I thought he was going to be really strong. And he is a god for live arena. Um, he's got three pieces of his kit that really make him stand out. So he's got an A2, attacks all enemies two times, and each hit has a 100% chance to remove random buffs from the target. Um, places a block buffs debuff and 50% decrease actually debuff for two turns. So the block buffs is really, really good. Decrease actually is okay, but block buffs, for example, there's a Lioris on the team, that's going to put block buffs on him and it means he doesn't get to put unkillable um, buff on himself. Say you come up against Duchess and Seafy, all those buffs that they throw out are going to get completely ignored and just completely useless. He is absolutely amazing. He's also got a passive where he can steal one random buff from the enemy team each time a buff, uh, sorry, each time a buff is placed on the enemy team. This is just so good. He can steal stone skin and he can steal all kinds of lovely other buffs that the, you know the enemy team are putting on themselves. So so strong. So not only does he do all that, but then he's also got revive all allies. So it's an AOE revive with 40% HP, but also he puts block damage buff on the enemy, uh, sorry, on your team for one turn for the champions that he revives. That is so strong. Um, so the way you want to build him is you can go stone skin if you want to go defensively. You definitely want accuracy on him so that, you know, he can strip. And uh, the reason I say stone skin as well is that you know, that you can also make sure that you get that block damage. The other way is you put on um, a stun set on him and you want him to be really fast and with lots of accuracy. And because the reason you want to put him a stun set is because he's got that double hitter on his A2 and he has an AoE hit on his A1 as well. So there's a very good chance you are going to be able to stun the enemy team. And stun set, it doesn't matter how much accuracy you have. And of course, if you're putting him in a stun set, you need Fearsome Present in the defensive tree. Coming in at number six is Necred, and he's the ultimate protector of nukers. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that your nuka has the lowest HP, so they do get the protection from him. So he throws on block debuffs and strengthen for three turns on your nuka if they've got the lowest HP. But then he also puts out ally protection for six turns. So what you want to do is you really want to make sure that your Necred has loads of HP and full stone skin, so you'll get that protection for two turns. And then he's also got an A3 that blocks debuffs, ally protection, and strengthen for one ally for three turns. And again, the ally protection buff is protected. That is huge. And again, ally protection reduces so much uh, damage that your allies will receive. And he's gonna be taking all of that and he's gonna be protected because he's got that stone skin. And he's also got a really nasty A2. Um, teams up with allies to attack one enemy. Um, all allies under ally protection buff placed by the strength will join in with the attack and use their default skills. And if the enemy is killed, then he gets an extra turn as well. Really, really nasty. And he just throw out his A1. But yeah, the amount of protection Necred can bring to the table is just huge. And it's really going to help keep your nukes alive. And they can just, you know, start popping off and just take out the enemy team. Coming in at number five is Warlord. I can't believe this guy's not higher up on the list. If you're lucky enough to have him in your account, you stick him in your team and you know he's going to get banned. And that means you can just choose whoever else you want to be in your team comp because they have to ban Warlord. Um, he's just so difficult to deal with. And it's all about his A3. So he has an AoE hit that will put has a 90% chance of putting the enemy's skills on cooldown. That is huge. There's a 10% chance that it won't happen, but 
90% is still very, very high. And then he has a 50% chance to fully deplete each target's turn meter. That is massive. Um, and the reason why I chose Warlord over Yumiko is because he can place block debuffs on all allies for one turn, but also then places big fat shields equal to 30% this champion's max HP for two turns and heals each target, sorry, each ally for 25% of their max HP. That is just absolutely massive. Um, so he's more defensive than Yumiko, and that's why I prefer him. Also, you can build him in loads of different ways as well. You can go stone skin, or you can like do a hybrid build where you put him in loads of resistance and accuracy, um, or you can go really, really fast and lots of accuracy. Personally, I would go really, really fast with lots of accuracy, so you can make sure you get that A3 off and just completely screw over the enemy team. Coming in at number four is Sifi, and she's built for speed. She is one of the best support champions for speed teams, and she has three amazing abilities in her kit. She's got probably the best single revive ability on her A3. So it will revive a single target with 55% HP and a full turn meter and places 50% increased attack and 30% increased crit rate buff for two turns. If you're lucky enough to have Rotus, you can just bring him back up. He will get to go again, and he can just start popping off and just taking out the team. This ability is just so sick. She's got an A2 that places block debuffs. Block debuffs is huge. You know, stop throwing bombs on you, stop block, uh, block debuffs, all those nasty debuffs that they can throw on you. She will stop that for two turns. She will also fill the tummy of all allies by 10% and place increased defense and 30% increased speed buff for two turns. That's really going to help your team with survivability and keep your team nice and fast with that increased speed buff. Just an amazing ability. But she's also got a really nasty A1. It has a 100% chance of placing sleep debuff if the turn meter is equal so sorry, if the target's turn meter is equal to 50% or above, she's going to put sleep on them and it cannot be resisted. So she doesn't need any accuracy. Um, an amazing champion and I wish I had her on my account. Coming in at number three is Marichka and she's another really annoying champion to come up against in live arena. And it's all because of her passive. So it revives all dead allies with 50% HP and 75% turn meter whenever this champion is killed. This has to be one of the best uh, AOE revivabilities in the game. And that 75% turn meter, that is huge. And what you want to do is, if you can, try and pair up with another revive champion like Sifi, like Duchess, like Pythium. So um, your, say your Sifi gets killed, then Marichka will revive Sifi. And then when Sifi uh, is revived, she will revive Marichka. And you just go in this vicious cycle where they just keep reviving the whole team or each other. And it's just really annoying and really frustrating to come up against. She's also got a really nice kit as well, like A3 um, removes all debuffs from allies, then fills turn meters by 15%. So she is like um, an advanced version of Arbiter. Um, she's great for speed teams, but you can use her in defensive teams like go second teams as well. Uh, fills the tummy of each ally by an extra 5% for each debuff removed from them. And then increases the um, res uh, resilience of all allies by 5% for each debuff removed. Grants an extra turn if five or more debuffs are removed. That is just insane. Uh, A2 fully restores all allies decreased max HP then heals all um, allies by 40% of this champion's max HP, places a shield buff and protected a protected sh um, strengthen buff on all allies for two turns. That, that strengthen again and it's protected just gives your team such survivability. Really, really strong. Uh, A1 attacks one enemy, one random ally will team up and join the attack the attack joining the ally will use their default skill. Again, that that's really nice. If you're lucky, that means your nuke can join in, but say you've got Sifi, that means she's going to put the champion that you target to sleep. Just, oh, just what a kit. This champion's kit is just too tonk. Coming in at number two is Pytheon, and he is everywhere in Live Arena. I'm pretty sure 95 
percent of the time the teams I'm up against they have a Python in them um, and for good reason he is a good champion I do feel that by himself he's not great he does need another support in the team and they do need to be throwing out a lot of buffs for him to become really top tier um, so he's got a really nice passive and um, allies receive five percent less damage from skills for each buff on them stacks up to 25 percent so that's why I'm saying you do need to bring in someone that's really going to help bring out all those extra buffs. And ideally, you want fire buffs on your team to really get the full benefit of his passive. Um, his A3 revives all allies with 50% HP and 50% turn meter. That's really nice. And then also places that all important strength and buff um, on allies for two turns. Uh, he also removes all debuffs from all allies, then heals them for... 10% of their max HP heals each ally by an extra 5% of their max HP for any debuffs removed from them. So he's really nice in a go second and slow team. Um, and then also places that all important block debuffs on allies for two turns. Um, but again, he is a cleanser as well. Cleanser and reviver is a great combo. And that's what you want. You want champions that bring as much utility that are going to help carry you in live arena. He's also got an A1 that attacks enemies two times and will heal the ally with the lowest HP by 5% of this champion's max HP for each hit. So ideally you do want to stack HP on him so that your A1 does help and really heal up your team. But yeah, he is a great healer. He's a great cleanser and a block D buff champion and a reviver. What, what more could you want? Coming in at number one, of course it has to be Duchess. I can't see anyone ever being able to knock her off that number one spot. She is just so good. You can literally just throw her into any team and they'll just take your team to another level. Um, there's certain champions you can just pair her up with and it just makes your team god tier. Put her in with like Usaga or Pytheon and your the damage and mitigation that those guys can do paired up with Duchess is just insane. And it's all because of her passive. And I think a lot of people overlook her passive. So a passive decreases the damage taken um, from AoE hits by 25%. That is huge. And you stack that with Pythian's passive or Usaga's, and they're just not going to be able to do any damage to you. She's also got a speed aura as well. So if you don't have a speed lead, you can just stick her in as well. And that's going to boost your speed as well, which is really nice. Um, she's also got an A3 that does an AoE revive. Your allies are going to be picked up with 70% HP. She will place a perfect veil on all allies except this champion for one turn. So what you want to do is stick her in stone skin. And that means that no one else is going to be taking hits. It's only going to be Duchess absorbing all those blows. And then also she's going to be putting on perfect, uh, sorry, continuous heal for two turns on the rest of the team. So she's going to be healing up the rest of the squad as well while she takes all those hits. It is just insane. Then she's got an A2 places block debuffs, which is really strong. As we said before, block debuffs is going to stop bombs. It's going to stop people stripping. Uh, well, it's going to stop like nasty things like block buffs as well. It is just such a good ability. Um, the increased attack buff is not amazing, but it's still nice. It is going to help with our attack based nukers. And um, then she also places perfect veils on all allies except her for two turns. Again, she's going to be in that stone skin and she's going to be absorbing all those hits while the rest of your team can just start popping off and just taking out the team. So A1 attacks one enemy two times, then place a shield buff equal to 10% of this champion's max HP for two turns. I think people forget about this. Oh, sorry. And also on the ally with the lowest HP, I think people forget about this. So what can happen is if she's the last person standing or is her and another champion are standing, this shield buff can be really annoying because it means that it can keep Duchess alive and she can cycle back around to that AoE revive and just pick up the whole team again and you can just start pip popping off again and just start ripping in to the enemy team. That has been the tier list, guys. Please do let me know who you think I've missed off and who are your favourite support champions. Do drop a comment below. And like I said, if you are new to the channel, please do give me a cheeky thumbs up. Make sure you smash, smash, smash that subscribe 
and I'll catch you in my next video. Peace.